Yellowstone National Park, known for erupting geysers like Old Faithful, is home to one of the largest volcanic systems on Earth, capable of wreaking havoc across continents, and experts say components of the so-called supervolcano are on the move. A new study published in Nature suggests that Yellowstone's magma and other superheated components have shifted northeast of the park's vast caldera, a giant volcanic crater that formed naturally hundreds of thousands of years ago. There's no single area in Yellowstone that could erupt, the magma expert explains. In other words, it won't be a problem in our lifetimes. There will be an eruption, but it will probably be thousands of years before we can expect that eruption. Eric Clemente Gonzalez, a professor of Earth and Planetary Sciences at Denison University, who was not involved in this study, added. He believes the shift is the result of the gradual southwestward movement of the North American tectonic plate, extending into northern Canada and into southern Mexico. Yellowstone's last eruption was 70,000 years ago, according to the United States Geological Survey. That was a small drop in the bucket compared with three very large explosive eruptions large enough to fill the Grand Canyon with lava and ash in the past two million years. In the past few years, several new insights into the nature of Yellowstone's magma reservoir have been published. These results are based largely on seismic data, particularly on the varying speeds of seismic waves in the subsurface. Seismic waves record information about the structure and composition of the subsurface as they travel through the Earth. From the seismic source to the receiver, the travel time can be used to determine how fast the waves are traveling. Hot or partially molten rock slows the propagation of waves compared with solid rock, so seismic waves that travel slower than expected may indicate the presence of hot or molten material. However, Measuring the travel time from a single source to a receiver provides only an average of information along the wave's path. Therefore, it is difficult to accurately characterize the highly variable and complex subsurface areas, such as those beneath volcanoes. More data is needed. Just as with a digital camera where more megapixels give you a better picture, more seismic data gives you better resolution of what the subsurface looks like. The current seismic network at Yellowstone is managed by the University of Utah Seismograph Station and consists of about 40 stations. The network not only detects earthquakes, but also offers important opportunities to investigate the structure of the subsurface. Scientists have used the speed of seismic waves from earthquakes occurring around Yellowstone and even hundreds of miles away to describe the current magmatic system beneath the Yellowstone caldera, which consists of two reservoirs stacked on top of each other, one containing viscous rhyolite magma at depths of 5 to 19 kilometers, and the second containing more fluid basaltic magma 20 to 50 kilometers below the surface. Based on seismic wave velocities, the melt fraction in the total reservoir system is less than 10% overall, assuming the liquid phase of the material is widely distributed in the solid rock matrix. The upper reservoir contains more melt, perhaps up to 20% based on recent estimates than the lower reservoir, but both are largely solid. However, this image does not provide any information on the texture of the reservoir or how the melt would be stored e.g. evenly distributed, all in one place or in a small container.
the University of Utah, in partnership with the University of New Mexico and Yellowstone National Park, is trying to address this knowledge gap with the temporary deployment of hundreds of seismic sensors across the region. The field campaign was conducted from August to September 2020, when about 650 autonomous seismic sensors, or nodes, were installed along roads and trails. These are the same types of sensors that have been used to study the dynamics of Old Faithful and Steamboat geysers. The 2020 Seismic Array is designed to passively record seismic waves generated by the ocean, known as microseisms. Although the energy of microseisms is small, they can be detected by modern seismometers even very far from shore, and have characteristics that make them ideal for studying the crustal structure beneath Yellowstone. A recent study published in the journal Earth and Planetary Science Letters suggests that images derived from dense array data better delineate the boundaries of the magma reservoir and better capture its physical properties than data from the backbone seismic network alone. The results show that seismic velocities are very slow near the top of the magma reservoir at a depth of 5 kilometers. The new imagery based on dense arrays is also very consistent with recent findings that rely on supercomputing power and analyze previously collected seismic data. By recording three components, vertical and horizontal, the current study using dense array data provides deeper insights into the structure of the crust and its texture. Like waves traveling along a guitar string that can move vertically or outward, seismic waves can have different polarizations, the direction of particle movement, as they travel through the Earth. Data from the 2020 Dense Array found that horizontally polarized waves travel about 20% faster than vertically polarized waves as they pass through the top of the magma reservoir. This suggests the presence of a localized, horizontally elongated magma storage area, called a sill, which means that the magma is stored in a sheet-like form, rather than being evenly distributed within the rock matrix. 